I'm John Morris. I'm going to introduce you to a new exciting product called Big Bar. Because in the canvas stretching business, occasionally we end up with huge images, such as these images that a customer expects you to be able to stretch. These images were printed on a 44 inch uh, uh, printer and are up to seven feet long. And we're going to stretch them today without the use of it automated stretching equipment, but we'll be using our big bar. And big bar solves problems. It solves problems in moving images around, and it solves finishing image problems as well. So we'll work with this image as a starter point. First thing we need to do is prepare our bars. And what we're going to use is the big bars. We're going to use it. The strainers for the back, we're going to use four bars. However, we'll avoid having to move the image. We'll also avoid having to use these babies, so we don't need these at all. The tools that we're going to need will be a hammer. We're going to need the pins. We're going to need a awl, possibly a pencil. A little piece of carbon paper. Definitely something to cut with. Possibly a pair of scissors. And staples. Because we're going to staple the image to the edge, just like you would in a normal stretching operation. We aren't going to use the tools that we just threw away that everybody dislikes using. We're also going to use a little cutting mat that we're going to move from corner to corner. This is going to make our job a little simpler. We also have glue dots, which we're going to apply to the end of our bars, which are going to allow the, the, us to hold the corners in place. We've already applied the glue dots to the ends, all but one, one end of these bars. So let's apply that dot to the end of this bar again. Our bars are now ready to, to utilize. On the side, you notice, we have a tape, an adhesive tape, that's going to assist us in stretching the canvas. These bars are two inches in depth, an inch and an eighth in width. To locate the image on the back side of the canvas, we look at our image where it has been joined. And at that corner, we take our carbon paper, place it underneath the proper corner on, on the face of the image, pull the carbon slowly, and we'll end up transferring the corner of that image to the back side of the canvas. We're now going to turn the canvas up over and mount our first bar. One difficulty that a lot of shops have is finding even a table large enough to work with these large canvases. However, this is a combination of small folding tables. We are now going to remove the uh, glue tape on the back on the side of the stretcher bar. We're going to use the, the top of the bar pointing towards the top of the canvas. We started this canvas at the bottom.
We're going to line the, the two ends of our stretcher bar up with the image. You can notice the dot. And at this corner, we're off. So we move our bar a little bit to the right. We've adjusted the bar so it's centered between the two dots. We'll now smooth the back of the canvas. onto the bar. The next step in the process is we're going to mount the, the corner, the uh, left and right bars. Once again, remove the tape. And what we're going to do is hold a triangle in the corner of the bar. And using the triangle, we've mounted the bar at a perfect 90 degrees. We'll do that to the other corner. And you can see how easy this is. It eliminates a lot of extra measuring to determine where the image is located on the back of the canvas. Once again, holding the triangle in the corner, take the stretcher bar, locate it, its edge against the corner, the edge against, and our, our two vertical bars are now located in position. We're now going to do the front bar or the top bar on the image. Once again, we're going to locate the bar into the corner and locate the other corner. After we determine the proper location of what is actually the top bar on this image, we're going to remove the tape. Just rotate the bar down into the proper location and then pressing it firmly, hold the bar and the canvas together. We're now ready to cut the corners so we can have a nice tight corner on the image. We're going to place our cutting mat underneath the image and the bars. We're going to make a simple cut, approximately an eighth of an inch, from the corner where the bars join. We're going to cut an angle that you can look at in the instruction sheets. We're going to make another cut across the edge of the across the edge of the bar like so you can use a triangle edge if you want to help you we're going to make a cut to so we can clear the the pin location on the bars so just make a straight little cut on the edge. We've now completed the four corners. The next step will be to start the stretching of the canvas. We're going to fold these tabs over the glue spots that are located on each end of the stretcher bar. You not need to make sure that the edge is tight against the corner because that's a portion the customer is going to see. The next step in the process will be that we're going to rotate our stretcher bars 
and place the pin into the corner. We're now going to place a pin into corner number four. Rotate the bars just as we did in the first situation. You may want to test fit the pins to make sure that they do fit in the corner. Rotate the corner, holding the edges tightly, and drive the pin into the corner. You will notice the bars have a gap in them, which is the, the uh, canvas that it's holding into the corner. We're now going to move to increasing the tension on the canvas. We can go to any of the remaining corners, and we'll use this corner to start. And it looks like it's already folded itself up pretty good. Let's just put that pin in. And we'll move to our last corner. Well, this corner pretty much took care of, it, of itself. Incidentally, the, one, the pin has two ends. This end is slightly curved, and of course the, the end that we're hitting with the camera is a square. At this point, we've completed stretching the canvas. So let's look and see how, it, how this image is turning out so far. Pretty good, but like on all large canvases, we need to put some strainer braces in the back. The next step in the process is going to be to staple the canvas to the bars. The staple is used as a security staple to prevent this canvas from peeling off at a later date because we're only using adhesive to assure the initial uh, tension on the canvas. So it's worth it to put a few extra staples in the, in the canvas to assure a nice, tight, finished job several years from now. First, I like to start at the corner and I put, place a staple across the two sta uh, the uh, across the two bars, which assists in holding those together. And then I'm going to work myself down the edge of the stretch canvas until it's totally tacked. Well, we finished stapling the security staples around the side of the canvas. Incidentally. I can assure you, you will want to use a pneumatic stapler. It's not a, a specialty stapler, so you can find them in any location. However, uh, you, you do need, you, it will save you plenty of time using pneumatic as opposed to the manual stapler. We're now going to position the support bars across the back of the canvas. This canvas is approximately a 72 inch canvas, so we're going to put the support bars at, let's say, 24 inches. So I'm going to do a, a quick location here at 24 inches, and you can see the additional tension we're putting on the canvas. You could either mount the bar in the vertical location, as so, or horizontal, as I'll, I'll show you over here. Personally, I, I prefer to use the horizontal mounted position. Gives, a, I think, a little more strength to the canvas. To put that in the lo proper location, once again, I'm going to drop a couple of staples on the side here, joining the bar to the canvas stretcher bar. And 
and over here I'm going to rotate this back into the horizontal position. I think it becomes a little more secure. And I'll put two staples in the other end. Well, we finished the job. The proof is, is the image tight or taunt, and it's going, going to stay that way. One of the difficulties in stretching canvas is people have a tendency to overstretch the canvas, which, has a ten, which does break down the fibers. But we've stretched this canvas evenly throughout the surface. We shouldn't have any loose areas at all. So let's see what the re final result was. As you can see, the canvas is nice and taut and should remain that way for years. Stretching canvas using the big bar is first simple, painless. You aren't using a lot of tools. You're using normal tools that you probably have already in your shop and you're getting excellent results. The edges are nice and smooth. They're held in positions. And the corners are very attractive to the eye. So you can see we have a nice folding of the corner, a nice smooth edge, something you can be proud of. It's easy to do, and there's not practically no size limit. This canvas, like I say, was printed on a 44-inch printer. It's uh, six foot in length. Consider big bar when you're finishing your next large canvas.